Welcome back to the City of Palms podcast. We got Atomic Kicks on today. How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Is, this good? is the first local legend who personally like, highlighted as a local legend mm-hmm. on the podcast, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So those listening, you probably know already what this man is doing with his life and what, what he does. But uh, yeah, we we got him in here today to try to find out a little bit more. I'm no, I know I'm super curious just from like when you sat down with Sling. Ever since then, I wanted to sit down with you. I was like, we got to get this going. So... So I'm hyped for this, yeah. This okay. is gonna be Where dope. Where do we start? Where do we start? I think we start. Jump right into it. Th- yeah, I think we should start from the beginning. You're born and raised here, right? No, I was actually uh, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. I moved to Florida when I was like nine. Moved to like Fort Myers. Went to elementary school, middle school, high school here. Um, then I went back to Ohio and was uh, went to college there, played football there, worked corporate there a little bit. Got my uh, bachelor's and master's in accounting. Played football. Uh, so, you know, I came back after I was done working. I was like, man, I got to get back to the city. There's, there's shit that I want to do. You know, there's there's plans I got. And like I told you a little bit before we got on the mic, different avenues I'm pursuing, different collabs I'm working on. So I just always wanted to come back to the city. But this is home for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Cleveland, I represent, like I was born there. You know, that's like what's in my blood. You know what I mean? But I rep 239 everywhere I go. You know, True. what about sports? Like for sports, are you are you both? Or are you just strictly? Oh no! Nah. Growing up, I, I was a diehard. Like basketball was my first love. Like I played AAU basketball. I was like diehard, always playing basketball. I didn't f- first start playing football till uh like sixth grade, maybe when I played Pop Warner here because they didn't have football up north. Like they don't have like or they, well they didn't have like yeah. organized sports up there. Um, for like younger kids you know mm-hmm. so that was one of the reasons why my parents like let's get out of Ohio because the school system's bad and they don't have like good opportunities for athletes so they were like let's go to Florida I'm like I, I didn't want to leave for nothing I'm like yeah Florida I don't know nobody here you're taking me away from my friends like this is crazy but it was the be- <laughs> it was the best thing for me like so I'm appreciative of that. What oh, age yeah. was that? Elementary school? Uh, yeah, I moved here when I was like nine, so like 2001. Yeah, like 2001 or something like that. True. No, 2002, maybe 2003. It was right. It was like right after 9/11. What was crazy was I lived in Ohio during 9/11, and one one of the planes that landed in Pittsburgh flew right over my crib, like in Ohio. That shit was like, like. The whole house was shaking. I was a little kid. I'm like, yeah, because that's right there. Yeah, I'm like, what the? F-? I'm like, what the fuck is going? On? The whole crib. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh shit. Then go on the news and you see all the everything with the planes hitting the twin towers, and then there was that other the other planes that had landed in different cities. One of them was in Pittsburgh, and I was like, bro, that that plane flew right over my crib. It was nuts. I was like, I was shook because you know as a little kid, you like, wow, that's cool, but then you like. Oh no, that's not cool because they smashed into the building. Yeah. So I was like, "Damn, this yeah. is crazy." So <laughs> that's that was like my last memory of like Ohio. Um, but yeah, I always go back there. I've got a little bit of family there, so um, that's in my blood. But I always rep the two three nine. Like this is my city. That's how I claim it. You know, yeah. whenever I travel all over, like the sneaker cons all over the country and different events, I'm always representing. The- where you from? Oh, you came all the way from Florida? You know, everybody's like, damn, you came all the way from Florida? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to put on, you know, I'm trying to represent, so. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's dope. So, yeah. yeah. Moving to Florida, did you, I know some people have fear of, like, hurricanes and stuff as they come out, because they don't know what to expect. Oh, Were you man. afraid of hurricanes? Man, what? That first, the first hurricane I experienced was Charlie. Oh! oh my God. <laughs> Bro, I was shook. I'm like, I'm like, no, we gotta go back or something, this shit is crazy. Like, the windows boarded up. Bro, I remember Charlie was so crazy because the power was out for like two weeks yeah. at my house. And I lived all the way, um, now I live off Del Prado, but back then I lived uh, over by Mariner. Uh, you know where that Bob Evans is at? Around the Clock Fitness and over that? Mm-hmm. Oh, off of Chiquita yeah. and, uh, what is that Chiquita? And, uh, is that Diplomat? Like in that area. Yeah. So I'm like, there, you know, there was no houses over there for real. Like, it's still not even, like, there's not a lot of houses in that area, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, we're like one of the only houses like on the block on the street and the power goes out. They're not getting to us till the back end. Like we're the last, last worry on their mind. So it's like our power was out for like two weeks. And I just remember when the hurricane came, I was like, I'm like, oh shit. Like 
I thought it would be cool at first. So I'm like, I'm trying to go outside, like creep outside, like see what's going on. I see those trees just like looking like they're about to snap like a twig. And I'm like, oh, I'm shook, bro. So we get in the house. We've got everything boarded up. And I remember when it hit, like we had damage to our house. Like we were in the closet, like with a mattress, like protecting us. Type. Bro, it was crazy. It was great. I was like, yeah. This is this is not cool. Florida got me shook right now. Cause I never experienced that. I grew yeah, up in the yeah. snow. Like I'm playing in the snow. We have a snowball fights. You know, that was cool. This shit is not. Like there's no fun with this, you <laughs> know? So I, yeah. yeah, Charlie was the first hurricane for me. I was like, oh, Was there any crazy. flooding out there in K- in Cape Coral? Uh, like in that area? I've seen like it seems like that would flood real bad. Yeah, I mean, I can't really rem- like I don't I don't really remember much flooding, but like just hella damage like the damage was crazy like we had like our whole back screen was ripped off like we had like a little bit of damage to our house like to the roof and shit like that then there was like uh i know if you go farther out like if you're going on uh if you're trying to go like toward punta gorda that area got demolished bro like punta gorda got smashed over there by charlie so i was like I'm like, yo, this is crazy, bro. Like, Damn. and all I was thinking, what I didn't know growing up, like in that point in time was if you're in the eye of the storm, that's actually the safest place. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that growing up. So like when I'm finding out where like my crib is like in the eye of the storm, I'm like, we're about to die, bro. <laughs> like it's about to be over. <laughs> like I'm like, no, I was shook. But then it was like, oh, I'm really safe. This is cool. Like after the fact, I was like, oh, we were straight. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was crazy, bro. Like, Damn. That experience was nuts. But I, feel I, like, I feel like flooding is something you, you don't really notice till you're an adult because the roads get all flooded. Like with mm-hmm. um, Irma, wasn't it was so wild yeah, how like you couldn't get most a lot of places because like the road was just too flooded. You yeah. just had to like pick different routes or just or just not go out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't do nothing. You know, back then when I was a kid, I wasn't on the on the roads, so it was yeah. like I couldn't really speak on it. Yeah. But it was like I, that's what I remember from Charlie. I was like. Yeah. It's crazy. These winds blowing almost knocked me over. Like I'm this little dude, and I'm like, oh shit, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Uh, yeah, that's that's a fear I've never had. I never even seen snow. So I oh mean, really? I, yeah, I've definitely been scared of a hurricane, but like yeah, it was kind of just normal. And grew, but I feel like we here. we never really had any like we were never into the vicinity where like we were worried about house damage or anything. You know, like I feel mm. like we were always pretty like secure yeah. to where we could like watch it from the porch or something like that. Yeah, mm. right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's hey, that's that's a reassuring feeling because I was shook. Like when I found out, yeah, that'd be terrifying. I, I was yeah. like, oh, and I'm, you know, I'm just moved here. I'm like, oh no, this is this ain't it. Like, take me somewhere else out of here. Like, can we leave? Like, how do we get out of here? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was uh, crazy. Yeah. Fuck. So, so let me see. Yeah, you look like a football player. Mm-hmm. You, hey, you look like you should be in the NFL or some <laughs> shit, dude, for real. I've always uh. Like, in high school, I was a skinny dude. Like, I was a skinny dude. Um, but I didn't really start putting on weight until college. Like, I had a good, a real good uh, training program in college, and I was just eating. Like, bro, I mean, like, five, six times a day, like, smashing. I'm going to the <laughs> dining hall. I'm on that PB&J diet. You know what I'm saying? Like, protein shakes, and I'm just demolishing stuff. So, that's when I really put on weight. And then after I stopped playing football, I just always, like, stayed in shape, you know, because I didn't want to, like, I was like, shit, I got some weight on me now. I'm not trying to get scrawny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was scrawny a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. My fault. You're good. But, yeah. Um, what position did you play in college? I played corner. Dope. Damn. Yo. That's sick. So, I went to uh, Mariner High School, and I played uh, quarterback and corner. And uh, I was just an athlete, like, coming out of high school. Like, I could just play with – I grew up – when I was playing Pop Warner, I played running back, like, my whole life. So, I was, like, always a running back. But then – our offense at Mariner, it was like based off of the quarterback. We went, we ran like the wing T offense, and it's just like option. Everything is option. So they were like, Torres, we want to try you at quarterback. Because I was running the ball pretty good. So I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, shit, let me try. I never played quarterback, but I'll try. So that shit was the most fun I ever had playing football. What? Playing quarterback, especially like with that offense, it's like, Bro, I'm running all the time, and I get to pick who gets the ball on, like, any particular play. Like, I got the ball every time. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> either I'm giving it to you or I'm running it or I'm throwing it to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get to choose. So, That's I thought dope. it was dope. But, yeah. but yeah, then I went to uh, college, and I went to a smaller school in Ohio. Um, the fir- first school I went to was uh, Baldwin-Wallace. They were, like, a D3 school. 
and I played safety there, but I didn't like the school at all. Like, just like the vibe and the people there just like wasn't what I expected at all. So I was like, no, I'm about to slide. And I had some of my boys from here that actually were going to the school that I graduated from, which was Hiram College. Uh, they were from Florida. Yeah, I went to Hiram. Hell yes. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah. probably know some people that went yeah, to Hiram. Yeah, yeah. So um, I had some of my boys that like went to North, went to Hiram. Sling actually almost went to Hiram, wow. which was crazy. Like we almost went and played college together, wow. you know, like not even knowing, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, I went over to Hiram and then I was like, shit, I'm just going to play corner. I get to play one position and I'm just going because with corner you have like control like it's just i gotta stop you from catching the ball and that's mm -hmm. all i gotta worry yeah. about mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i ain't gotta worry about what this guy doing this guy doing whereas quarterback you gotta worry about all the linemen you gotta worry about the receivers you gotta worry about all the play calling the running back yeah. you gotta make sure everybody in the right spot you gotta call audibles you gotta read the coverages God damn. i'm like yeah let me just play corner i'm just gonna lock this dude up right here and mm -hmm. that's you know what i'm saying <laughs> So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I knew the one kid I I know that went to high room was his name's Josh Philander. Did you yeah, he, yeah, Philander. Yeah. That's yeah. my boy. You played with him? Yeah, what? he played receiver. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, dude. What? that's Hell my yeah. boy. We yeah. still talk. Really? Yeah, every what? once in a while we catch up. You know? Hell yeah. We just had me and him were just having this long dialogue on on Facebook about um about the Ohio State Clemson game and how I felt they got robbed. And, like, people were like, oh, sore loser. But, uh, like, man, fuck y'all. Y'all, you know, I'm giving, like, football perspective. And then me yeah, and him were going yeah. back and forth. And we just had a good dialogue. So, yeah, that's my boy. Hell, yeah. We always represented for the 239. Like, there was hella athletes from Florida that went to Hiram. Like, 239 boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of Florida boys. But we were, like, the 239, like, representers. Like, we stood out on the field, you know? So, yeah. so yeah. What a small world. I know, right? He lives back yeah, down here, crazy. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw him the other day. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Damn, so you said you uh, you got a bachelor's and a master's in accounting? So, I don't know exactly how it works. Your football, college football career was during your bachelor's program, right? And then after, when you went on to your master's, that was after football? Yep. Okay. Man, that must have been tough to juggle. That's a tough major. And I was running my business the whole time. Atomic Kicks? Yeah. Well, I was going to ask if you had any hustles before that. What Was that, like, your first official, like... So I actually started the Atomic Kicks when I started buying and reselling shoes probably like 2011, 2012, right before I went to college because I was working at Finish Line. So I was plugged okay. in like I was doing inventory. So I knew all the shoes that were coming in. I had <laughs> first pictures, first access to them. So I'm like, OK, this, you know, and I'm hyping it up. And then I see like I remember one of the first releases that I worked was like the Concord re release. <laughs> And I knew the inventory, so then I see all these people lined up out front, and I'm like, oh, we ain't got this many pair, but all these people want them. Supply and demand, that's all I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, shit, so if I get my pair, I could flip this and make some money easy. So, <laughs> so then I started getting my employee discount. Whenever a hot release coming, I'm getting my employee discount. I'm getting that shoe for like 120 sell it 250 I'll make a quick 100 That's better than... <laughs> What I'm making all week, you know what I'm saying? What? So I'm like, okay, bet. So yeah, yeah. that's that's how I started, just to put a little money Jeez. in my pocket because I was young, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I had a little job, but I was trying to like level up a little bit. So especially before I went to college, you know, because I knew I wouldn't be able to work like that while I was in college with playing football. So um, that's when I started, and then I did it all throughout college. Like Damn. I wouldn't be able to travel and go to the events how I do now. You know, you see me in Boston and Atlanta and L.A., Chicago, all over the place. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I was going like, I'll go to Cleveland. I'm like, oh, they got sneaker con in Cleveland? Bet, I'm there. Like, if, if this is my only weekend off on our bye week, um, that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And I was doing it the whole time while I was getting my education. It was it was crazy because my, uh, my football coach, he didn't even know, like my head coach, he didn't even know I was running my business the whole time. And he, <laughs> he found out like my junior, like late in my junior year. And he was like, he's like, Torres, why didn't you tell me you were running this business this whole time? I'm like, I was just doing my thing. You know what I mean? He was like. I see all the players getting these new shoes, and then Coach Price is getting a new pair. That was our, that was our, de our defensive coordinator got a couple pairs from. He's like, he's like, I see all these new shoes coming. In. I'm wondering where they're getting them from. The whole time is you. I'm like, yeah, I'm just you know doing my one two, staying low key. He's like, damn, that's awesome because you know I had pretty good grades as well because I was able to go to a master's program. So he's like, he's like, I still don't know how the hell you did all that because you know I played football, got my education, and ran the business. So he was like. 
wow. He's like, wow, that was awesome. So, yeah, it was definitely a hustle. Like, bro, it was like, I wake up, go to morning workouts, go to class, go to film, eat, try to take some pictures of some shoes that I got. Boom. After class, I go to practice. After practice, I'm coming back studying. Then I'm up late. Like, I'm up late. Like, anybody that knows me knows I'm a night owl. Like, bro, I'll be up to, like, four in the morning. Like, regular time I go to sleep is anywhere between two and, like, five in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, everybody want to call me. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I'm up late. Like, I'm always up late plotting because I feel like, Ever since I've been little, that's that was like my time to execute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, while everybody else sleeping, I'm up late working on something. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that was me in college. Like I'd be up late. As soon as I'm done studying, I'm I'm working on the business. Like how can I? Let's let's do some different pictures. Let's do some different videos. Let's let's hit this dude up. See if he needs a shoe coming out. Let's see what shoes are coming out this month. Let's see what events are coming up. You know what I mean? So just. Planning and plotting. That's that's my late night. That's my late night. Like my own time. There's no distractions. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's up and active between during the day. I'm late night by myself, just plotting, learning, working on different stuff. So I fuck with that. I feel yeah, that. Yeah. Is it just you? Has it been just you the whole time? Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> I got um. I have a good partner that I work with in Cleveland because I was there for a long time. Uh, I help provide inventory for that store over there, which is called the Blueprint. Um. But yeah, everything that I do, like as far as shoes and clothing and traveling to events, is me by myself. I run everything by myself. Jeez, yeah. So that's I was, crazy. So you said I'm wondering. Uh, you said you worked at Finish Line, and that's when you kind of were rolling around the ideas of like supply and demand and all that. Mm-hmm. Is do you have access to like distributors and stuff? Like if if you see where they're getting all the shoes from. Could you contact that distributor and get shoes to you if you had the money? See, there's a way to do that, but there's a lot of uh, like you have to get a Nike contract and oh, let's say, let's say I want to get a Nike contract I would have to not only be able to get the hot shit that comes out but I get a lot of the bullshit like oh, the I stuff see. that you see that sits in finish line like on clearance I gotta take that as well they don't just give you like direct access I to see, I see. just the oh yeah I just want the good stuff no you gotta take some of that bullshit too and you gotta sell that as well so um yeah. I stay away from that. I don't navigate those waters because that's a lot of overhead and that's a lot of expenses that I'm not really trying to incur. So um, I just buy and resell and I just have a lot of connections throughout the sneaker world and industry. Like as far as I might not know someone in a different city that happens to work at this store. Maybe it's one of my boys I went to school with and he happens to be the manager there or (laughs) I got someone that I used to work at finish line with. He's a manager here. Or I've got one of my boys that's good friends with so-and-so at this store. You know what I mean? So I just utilize my network. That's that's really what I do. There's no, like, direct from Nike, direct from Adidas. You know, I do my little online hustle here and there, too. But yeah, I'm a, yeah. I like to get on get on the streets and do my footwork. So, yeah. Because I was going to say, it would be so wild if you, like, if you did know what hot shoes were coming up to, like, go on sale or something like that at Finish Line, if you bought a whole bunch, and then as the peop- as you sold out at the store, you could mm. be telling people in line, like, here's my number, though, just contact me. Oh, no. <laughs> I do that all the time. Like, like you know, we're still a uh, up-and-coming market, so, like, if we get any releases at the mall, oh, I'm there. Nine times out of ten, I already got it or already had it, but uh-huh. I'm over there. I'm politicking with people. I'm networking. You know, I'm getting my my name and my brand out there. And I'm like, they're like, damn, I wanted a size. Bada da da. I'm like, well, shit. Here's my car, bro. I can get whatever you need. Just let me know. <laughs> I probably got that size already. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. just shoot me a text and we we can work out a deal. So that's I do stuff like that too. I make sure I get my face out there and I'm always working. I just don't want to be like behind the scenes online i like to be personable and link up with my customers and you know I, i'm sure you guys see i'm always posting pictures with my customers mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. like that i really enjoy like what i do it's not like just straight financial for me it's like i really love this shit you know what i'm saying like i've been doing it for so long without m- making a lot of money like when i was in school it was just straight passion so um i just love that interaction i get to have with customers and you know, let's say somebody was looking for these shoes for the past two years and I helped them get them and they just, that feeling that they get of like fulfillment, 
I love providing that to somebody. That shit is just so dope to me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I just have like some old heads. I'll meet at sneaker con or different events sometimes, and they'll be like, "Man, young blood, like I appreciate you. I've been looking for this for so long, and <laughs> man, they just they hug me. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. want to show love, and to me, that's that's awesome because I provide not only a service for somebody, but I gave them that feeling mm-hmm. of happiness. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really what I'm about and what I strive to do. Like I want to. I want to make people happy. Like at the end of the day, I want to inspire people and I want to make people happy. So that's really why I do what I do to the extent that I do it. Cause anybody could just sell something, right? Yeah. Anybody could have something that's hot and sell it, but I want to build that relationship with you. I want to have that interaction with you. I want to make sure you happy. You know what I'm saying? So that's dope. Damn. So has it, all, has it always been uh, strictly sneakers or have you like kind of diverged a little bit and like in your time doing this, like tried out a little a thing here and there? Is it, has it been strictly sneakers? Um, It's been mostly sneakers, but I do do a lot of like apparel and streetwear like Supreme, Babe, yeah. Antisocial, Off-White, you know, stuff like that. I dabble in that as well because there's a market for that as well and it goes hand in hand. So like sometimes depending on the market that I'm going to. I only take clothing to a show just because it's a little bit harder mm. to travel with shoes, right? Oh. So, like, I'll just I just do my research on the market before beforehand so I know what type of inventory I want to take so I'm not I'm not wasting space, I'm not wasting money, I'm, I'm just executing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I do apparel as well. I'm actually dropping some merch. I'm doing a pre-order for my own merch right now. Dope. But today, I was uh, working on production, so I'll have a couple sample pieces tomorrow, but... I got some merch dropping. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to do something different. Um, I feel like a lot of people that dibble and dabble in, like, the clothing market, they all do, like, like a plain T-shirt with, a, like, logo or their brand name or whatever. And I feel like that's cool. That's dope. Like, you want people to represent that and get the name out there. I respect it, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to bring something different to the table. Like, you see a lot of artists, they go on tour and they have their own merch, right? Limited pieces that... If you were at this event, you only get that item. You can't get it nowhere yeah. else, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to approach the shit like, I'm going to approach it like an artist. I want to drop some merch because I don't see anybody doing it like this, you know? So, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm just doing the pre-orders for two weeks on the two colorways that I dropped. I'm doing pre-orders on, and that's it. After that, they're done. You, you can't get that colorway anymore. It's over. You know, just limited time drop. Wow. Like, that's, that's, that's how I want to approach it. Like, merch. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is it. So. Damn, that'll that'll be cool, especially as you keep doing it. Because, like, once they know, like, damn, I'm not going to be able to get that anymore. Then the next one comes. It's like everyone's going to jump on it. Like, yo, he's only doing this for a certain amount of time. Right. And I got yeah. a lot of different plans with that. Like I told you, I'm working on some different collabs and uh, different projects. So, this is just. This is just getting started, like just, just something to start the new year off okay. with a, with some new style. You know what I'm saying? Bring something different to the table, cause I don't see anybody doing merch like this. You know, like as as a sneaker reseller, I don't see anybody dropping merch like that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not. I might not have the biggest following or the most clout, but I'm gonna bring something different to the table. You know, something that people, undeniably, you, are gonna fuck with it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So something dope that. Anybody, you could you could wear it basic, or you could match it, or you could just, you know, everybody got their own way of styling something. So, hell yeah. Are there any of those left? Do you still sell those? track suits? Mm-hmm. So all my track suits, I do custom order. Oh okay. So it's like everyone's getting their one of one piece. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh. you could get this, and you could get the whole suit that's orange with a black logo. Nice. You could get full yellow with the black logo. I wanna my thing with the track suits as well, like. I don't like the sense of like, I can go to a store and get this shirt and then like anybody else could get it too. I don't like, like, I always like to be different, right? So mm-hmm. I provide my stuff on, on custom basis. Like you want a tracksuit? What color you want? What color combination you want? You so know, I was thinking, no, I was like, no, but I, I know, <laughs> but, yeah, but really I want like, like I want order right here actually. <laughs> yeah, no, but really I got to talk to you about that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, bro. I'll take care of you. You for know sure. what I'm saying? Right. So looking fly as fuck coming up to these shows. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> too, yeah. So yeah, that's what I like to do. I like it to be custom because then whatever color c- combination you do, you're not going to see anybody else with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or however you want it. You can even do a little, 
you could add a little something to it. I could put some flair on it, you know what I'm saying? Add a little something to the sleeve, something to the hood, however you want to approach it, you know? Okay. So everybody gets their own custom piece. Like I was saying before with the merch, it's like, I'm going to drop this, and that's it. If, if you got it and you pre-ordered, there it is. It's not... I don't know. You're not going to see that color again. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I like to approach it because then everyone feels like one of one. That's how I want mm -hmm. everybody to feel like one of one. Like, this my shit. Like, ain't nobody got this color. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And I, to me, that's dope. Like, I'm giving them that feeling of like, this is custom, bro. You can't, you can't just go to the store and get this. You know? Yeah, that's so. super dope. Uh, yeah, because it's the worst whenever you, like, get something fresh and then you're out and someone has the same thing on. You're like, damn. Right. Yeah. And especially around here, the city's so small, mm -hmm. like, tight-knit, like, everybody knows everybody type of feeling. <laughs> so, like, you don't want to go to the club or go out to the mall and you see dude with the same outfit on. Like, what, bro? Yeah. That's, like... You, whenever you see that happen, you want to walk the other way. Like, I don't, oh shit, he different got, club. Like, damn, he got my shit on, bro. And you know, it's like, I don't yeah. want anybody to feel like that. So, everything custom, everything one on one. That's fire. Damn. He's doing it different over here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Let's take a quick, uh, we're going to take a break real quick and roll sure. a couple ads your way, and then we'll be right back for the second half. The City of Palms podcast is brought to you by Anchor. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show onto all the apps people use? How do I make money from the podcast? And the answer to all this is really simple, Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. Me and Danny searched all over the internet for different outlets for distributing and recording and uh, for websites that would host our podcast. And a lot of them, you have to pay money or it's really complicated, and j especially for someone just starting out. And Anchor really was an answer to all that because you can record straight on Anchor. It's very user-friendly and it's totally free. We, we don't have to pay a penny to use this. And so it's great for anyone who's wanting to start out. And so if you're if you're wanting to start your own podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me in that diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Welcome back to the City of Palms podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed those ads. Um, so what to get into? Yeah. He had said he had said something, and, and this was like, I think this what he said before we started recording was like the intro to all this podcast because you brought it up on Sling's podcast on like I think when we were on break there too or something. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, God damn, what? And yeah, it was that so you so you you got your master's yep. degree, which first off that's like how many years of school? Eight. You know what's crazy? Uh, the master's program was uh like minimum of two years, but I finished it in a year. What? Oh, yeah. Shit. Just grind it out. Yeah, knock that shit out. I did like uh, 18 credit hours each semester or some shit like that. And then Damn. I was still doing my business, like traveling to shows on the weekends. Like I even set my schedule up so I could work like or that I could uh, have classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I was off from Thursday to Sunday. So then I would be able to travel and go to shows. Damn, you know, so you like, just pack it that first I'm half packed, week. I packed it in, bro. I'm talking about three, four hour seminar classes like. I'm in there, but like, <laughs> okay. Do you drink yep. coffee or energy drinks or anything? Nope. What? I don't uh, drink coffee, none of that. People look at me like, you don't drink coffee. I'm like, no, nah. like, psh, I just, because wow. I've always been in this mode of like, I think it was like coming up playing sports. Like I would see different dudes like take stuff like creatine or like some dudes, like when I was in high school, they took this shit called Alpha Draw and they got like super big off of that shit, but it started like fucking their muscles up and they had like injuries and shit from it but i was always in the mindset of like i'm gonna just be organic like anything i can do i can do it and i don't need no additional boost like i don't care if it's coffee i don't care you know what i'm saying like so mm -hmm. i was always in, of that mindset of like this is just natural like this is me my energy like i'm gonna get it you know what i'm saying yeah. so uh, yeah. um that's always the mindset that i had but um yeah i have i was in my uh master's program um, and I was running my business and I got a job offer like the first month of my program, like just because of the school I was going to, this is actually this little, this little 
binder I take everywhere. I mean, it's my <laughs> business binder. Like, if I bring this, I'm coming to handle business type shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it from college, and uh, I went to Case Western uh, University. And uh, it was, like, one of the top accounting programs in the country. Like, it's top 20 accounting program. So when people went there to that program, it was like these accounting firms were like, oh, if you got accepted to this program, we want you to come work for us. We don't even care when the, the only stipulations were finish the program. You finish this program, you have a job. So I had the job offer like the first month. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they kind of they sold me a dream. They were like, yeah. So the recruiting guy was actually from Tampa. So me and him hit it off. Like me and him were cool. We got into a good dialogue, good conversation. He's like, I like you, man. Like, I'm going to try and get you an interview. I said, OK, bet. Got the interview, ended up getting hired. That full full offer, like salary job, benefits, all that. Jeez. First month, I just started this program. <laughs> now, mind you, I'm going through this program, and this shit is hard, bro. I'm like, I'm ready to drop out of this, bitch. I'm about to, at one point, I was about to just be like, you know what, fucking, I'm done. Like, I don't want to even really want to do this shit anyway. Like, my whole plan was to open up a shoe store anyway. Like, I'm just going to quit now and start early. You know what I'm saying? But then I was like, like no, I got to stay the course, like... Grind it out. Just grind it out, Drew. You got one year. Shit, you could do anything in, in nine, ten months. I could go through anything for nine or ten months, right? So I'm like, fuck it. Knocked that program out. Got my master's. Then came back to Florida for a little bit before I started my job. And then I worked corporate accounting for uh, Price Waterhouse. It's like one of the biggest. If you ask anybody like in the corporate world or, you know, a lot of people in like law or anything like that, they know who Price Waterhouse is. Like one of the top four accounting firms. It's called one of the big four. And, uh, yeah, it's like really prestigious, Jeez. really prestigious type. So, you know, uppity, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, I did that for like nine or 10 months. And I was like, I can't do this shit no more. You wore a suit and tie to work? No, nah, I didn't wear a suit and tie, suit. but I, I have my little nice polo, my little jeans or slacks, my dress shoes, you know how to get fitted proper. I can't come in there looking bummy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but I did that. And, uh, Prior to me starting that job, they were like, oh, yeah, it'll be no problem. You'll be able to transfer to Florida. We've got offices in Miami, Tampa, Jacksonville, Orlando, wherever you want to go. So I'm like, oh, bet. Okay, so let me work here in Cleveland for like three or four more months, and then I get to transfer to Florida. This is lit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. What? They gave me the runaround. I was trying to transfer. The people in the office, they liked me so much, they didn't want me to go. Cause I was, I was efficient. Like I was doing like, not to like boost myself up or nothing, but they would give me a project and they're expecting it to take two hours and I'm done in like a half hour, 45 minutes. And they're like, Oh, this, this young dude's pretty good at this shit. So they didn't want me to leave. They wanted me on the team. So I'm like, you know, I was just knocking that shit out. And then I'm like, damn bro. Like I want to transfer. Like y'all gonna, what's up with the transfer? They're like, Oh, it's not in our hands. It's up to HR. There has to be availability. Da 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 da. Long story short, there was no availability for a long period of time, and I waited, and I tried to wait patiently, and then I was like, y'all holding up my dreams anyway. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Y'all holding me back. Like, I'm in this office 50, 60 hours a week, and I can't even go get these shoes that are about to drop that I could make what I'm making this month in a weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could do that easily. So I'm like, I'm out of here. Bye. I'm done. (laughs) They're like, like, what are you going to do? And I told them, they're like, damn, we respect you. Because <laughs> there were so many people in the office that just wanted to, like, leave. Like, they didn't want to do the job they were doing. They just, mm-hmm. their life kind of kept them in that position where they had to have that job. You know what I mean? They had to have that consistent money come in. They couldn't, they didn't have something that they were working on on the side. They just, you know, there's people that, like, have side hustles, like you guys know, are working to grow something. And then there's people that just, like, all right, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to get my check. And then I'm going to go home and chill. You know, yeah. to each his own. Like, everybody has their own way of navigating the waters, but that's not me. You know, like, I'm a hustler. I always, when I was uh, growing up in middle school, I used to always burn CDs and I would be trying to sell CDs. I was selling. <laughs> I knew there was some, there had to be something like that. With yeah. the music and shit? Yeah. How I'm like so in tune with the music and everything? Yeah. yeah, bro. Like, I was in middle school, I would burn and make CDs and sell them. And they tried to suspend me one time because I was selling. They were like, you can't sell stuff at school. I'm like, what? Like, I'm hustling. Like, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm you, re- you read the agenda book, like, I don't see a rule against it. Yeah, you, it's man. like, what? I can't burn and sell CDs? Like, when I was in elementary school, I'd, like, sell candy and shit. We had this one dude when I lived in Fort Myers, well, here in Fort Myers, uh, there was this one dude that lived, I went to Harlem Heights, 
and he had this uh his house was a candy store like he had he was this spanish dude was plugged in on the candy his whole garage was a candy store it was called netos the spanish dude right <laughs> we used to go there and we would we would buy we would get like a bunch of shit like we would take our lunch money and buy shit and then we would go to school and flip it <laughs> you know like i was i was peddling candy early i started doing the cds like i had been hustling so this was in my blood you know what i'm saying so like I couldn't just sit like at a desk like fifty to sixty hours and just like work on this spreadsheet all day. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm dozing at this. That's when I started drinking coffee. <laughs> Gee, shit, that was the first time I started drinking coffee. I'm like, man, coffee sucked, but let me get one of these iced mochas or something so I can stay awake. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm dozing off at this shit so boring. So I'm like, yeah, bro, I've always just been hustling. So I had to quit. I, yeah, I had to quit. Yeah. I was going to ask, because um, I, I imagine accounting, your master's degree and that program you went through and your jobs you had, it's helped you run a business and mm-hmm. a lot of that goes hand in hand with what you do now. Yeah. But going to that corporate job every single day, did you feel like disjointed to where you had all this stuff you were planning to do and like all these projects you needed to be working on as far as your passion project, but then you'd have to spend this many hours at something that's got nothing to do with what you want to do? You hit it on the head, bro. I felt like two different people. Dude, like I feel I, that every day. I felt like two different people. I would be, I'd be like my, my entrepreneurial like hustling self at home on the weekends or outside of work. But then at the office, I call I call myself corporate Drew. Right? That was <laughs> that was my like little my little switch that I would put yeah. on. I'm like I'm corporate Drew in here. Like nobody knows about my side business except for a couple people that I'm really close with because I didn't want them to think it was conflicting with like my productivity as far as like at work right like i didn't want them to think oh well he's got a whole side business maybe he's not working as hard on this project you know how people that don't have a hustle they think like that they think Mm -hmm. oh well you can't multitask you can't work on two different things it's going to take away from this thing no i was doing both i just didn't tell y'all about it you know what i'm saying so yeah i understand like bro it's just i used to just flip the switch like i put my little dress clothes on I'm corporate Drew. As soon as I leave the <laughs> office, man, I'm up and out that shit. And I'm going to hustle. I'm going to make a play like right now. Yeah. This dude needs some shoes. Say less. I'm meeting him, his brother, his cousin, whoever. Like I'm, I'm running the streets. So yeah. yeah. And I imagine even if you did transfer to to like a firm down in Florida, like Miami or something like that, I imagine that would have made it even harder because then that would have you would have been in more in your element and you would have been like making even bigger moves. So then maybe while you're working, you got to work like a the eight hour shift or whatever and you need this number of hours to get this shit done for your passion so right. you're like it's like fucking with your actual business you mm-hmm. know so it might have gotten to a point where you're just like yeah i can't do this anymore yeah, I, <laughs> I knew i knew at one point it was going to be inevitable for me to maintain both yeah. just from my personality you know because the obligation is only going to get higher the, the the farther you move up the ladder in the corporate world you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so they have expectations and they have shit that they want you to do. And I knew that's going to take more time. That's going to take away from what I wanted to do in the first place. And I already knew what I wanted to do going into it. It'd be one thing if I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do before I started that job. But I already knew. It was just a matter of timing. Mm-hmm. And before I quit my job, my mom was like, you know, moms, they just want the best for you. You know, she was all stressed. Like, are you sure you're going to be OK? Like, are you going to have enough money to, like, do things that you want to do? Like, I know you want to grow your business and do that but are you sure about this and i'm like ma i'm gonna make a shake like that's one of my slogans like regardless when the odds are stacked against me i'm gonna get the job done i'm gonna make a shake i'm gonna make that play i'm a people would always ask me like why do i use the hashtag or the slogan like mr make a shake mm-hmm. <laughs> i was just uh telling somebody about this earlier and yesterday like when the odds are stacked against me i'm gonna i'm gonna make it happen like one way or another I'm going to make that play. I'm going to make that sale. I used to, I would go to events and uh, I build like good camaraderie with other vendors at like these events that I was going to. And we'd always know each other and see each other. Mm -hmm. And they would see me sell shit that wasn't hot. Like, you know, right now Yeezys and Travis Scott is really hot, right? But Nike basketball isn't really hot right now. Like LeBron's or KD's or stuff like that, right? I'm getting them shits off at the events. It's not hot, but I'm making them sales. They're like, Yo, Drew, how the fuck are you selling this shit? They're like, yo, that's Mr. Make It Shake. Like, y'all take the bullshit over there. He going to get it gone. You know what I'm saying? They just gave me that little nickname and I just stuck with it. Like, that's my little like side hustle. You know what I'm saying? Like, so my alter ego, like, you know, 
no matter what, I'm gonna make it shake. So. Man. You've never worked sales. Other than other than finish line. Yeah, other than finish line. Because I was gonna say, I mean, you got that job offer as you were in your like master's program, Mm -hmm. but like if you would have finished that degree and everything, I feel like sales would have been a big like thing you probably could have killed. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like I've even thought about sales and other like I thought about doing like car sales yeah, yeah, on the side and shit like that like cause bro I could sell water to a fish you know what I'm saying yeah. like it doesn't matter you're gonna want it just because of the interaction and like I told you the relationship that I like to build with my customers like when when they come to events I don't just be like hey bro you trying to buy this anybody could do that you know what I'm saying I'm like what's up bro how you doing I just start off nice little simple conversation what's up bro how you doing if you're looking for anything in particular today, just let me know. If you want to try anything on or if you want to take a look at it, I could take it out for you. It's no problem. You know, just just start that easy look, little conversation starter just to, oh, well, you know, you never know how they might react to it. You know, some people are kind of standoffish and, no, I'm just looking. And then there's other people like, oh, actually, could I see that? Like, what size is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, bro, you want to come sit down and try it on? So, you know, I just practice good business habits, good I just feel like good interactions, you know what I mean? Like good vibes. That's mm-hmm. all I want to give off to people is good vibes because you'll gravitate toward me. You know, it's not just about making the sale, but we're going to have a good relationship after this, you know? And I always tell my customers, like, there's a difference between shopping online and shopping with me. You can shop online and you might get the same thing I've, I've got, but I'm going to show you love. You keep shopping with me. I'm gonna give you discounts. I'm gonna, I might throw you a shirt here and there. You know what I'm saying? Like we're building a relationship. I'll come deliver it right to your crib. You just, oh, you just went out to dinner and you need these shoes before you go out of town. I'm pulling up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the service I provide. You can't. There's nobody else providing service like that around, that yeah. I know doing what I do. A lot of other people are just like, yeah, send me your address. I'll ship it to you. But if you local, I'm pulling up. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's how I try to approach it. But yeah, I love, like, I've always been in, like, the sales mindset. Like I told you, ever since I was a little kid, I've been selling stuff. Candy, CDs, whatever. So it just come natural. Yeah. So for the for listeners who don't know, what your current operation, your full-time, the Atomic Kicks, running it and gunning it, what is your, like, what is the operation as of right now? Because eventually you do want to get your own like store store, right? Yeah. Like, so I was uh, when I first moved back, I was actually going to open a store here. And one of my biggest things that was holding me up was like. I was questionable about the market. You know, I didn't know if the market was sustainable to open a sneaker store here. And it was just me by myself, you know. I, I didn't want to go into it by myself because I'm working every day. I'm, I wouldn't be able to travel to events and stuff like that. So I wanted to build a little team and, and stuff like that. So I just I just held back on that and was like, okay, let me just work on building customer base, interacting with people, building my network, starting a little coalition, building a little team. You know what I mean? Just approach it a different way. So eventually I'm going to have something. There's, there'll be more info on that soon, but um, probably this year. I don't want. I'm not gonna go into any details. I'm gonna. I'm. A, I'll keep you guys filled in. But I got a lot of big shit planned. Like I was telling you before we got on the mic, I got a lot of different collabs I'm working on. Um, I got a collab I'm doing with Royal Hustle. Um, you know, I do a lot of stuff with Sling as far as like the music end. I've also got another artist that I'm planning on meeting with this week you guys are familiar with so uh i just got a lot like i told you i'm navigating the waters and working on different things and just trying to build a uh something bring something different to the city that nobody's ever seen before so yeah and you're still you're still regularly going nationwide to different events all the time yep um i took this month off just to be home based just because december like holiday season was crazy like the whole month i was back to back to back to back to back hitting shows like so I was like, you know what, I'm going to take January off from hitting any shows. I'm just going to refocus, work on my health, work on my mental health, work on my physical health, work on my relationships and my network locally, um, and just refocus. You know, new year, new decade, first off. You know, I just look at it like 
the 2010s was cool, but this is a new decade. I haven't done shit yet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's time to level up. It's time to do some different shit. Like, I, I haven't done anything yet. It's a whole new, it might be a new year, but it's a new decade. I've accomplished nothing. All that, all the, the degrees and the master program and the business full time. That was the last decade, bro. What are you going to do now? You know what I'm saying? That's what I tell myself. Like, what the fuck? That was cool. Yeah, you did that. Good job. But now what? Where are you going to go from here? Right? Mm-hmm. So, 2020, that's why I dropped the merch on them. I'm like, let's bring something different to the table. Yeah. You know? Let's drop some merch. So, uh, that's that's what made me start the new year off with that. New year, new drip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, ah, fuck, dude. This has been dope. I've learned Bro, a lot. your mindset's inspirational. Like, And it's weird how like just these past couple of days, I was telling you off the air about like, BS that I deal with, like, the grind I'm trying to, like, juggle right now, because yeah. I'm kind of in that, like, corporate job while trying to do my side shit, mm-hmm. and, like, everything you've said has just, like, made my gears turning, like, yo, I got it, it got, it's like, I think I've said this on the podcast, but, like, I always, Casey Neistat, he has a quote, he says, if you really, something about, like, if you really want to be successful, work a job you fucking hate, because every day you're there hating that job, thinking about what you want to be doing, mm-hmm. it's just going to fuel that drive and fuel that passion to where you can do all-nighters and just be plugging away, grinding, coming up with ideas, learning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I, see, one of my biggest things that I also want to do, like, just in life, like, like, fuck the business aspect of it. Like, one of the things I want to do in life itself is to inspire. Like, that's my biggest goal. Like, people... People talk about long-term goals and leaving a legacy and stuff like that. And my biggest thing, I want to inspire people. I want to inspire people to have a better life, to to work harder, to reach their goals. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I've always like like I was telling you off the air how I had some friends that were going through stuff, and I give them that positive reinforcement. Like, cause I want people to be better. Like I want you to be the best you can be. Like that's only going to help grow our community. That's all I want. I want everybody to succeed. There's enough food on the table for everybody to eat. I always tell everybody that there's enough food on the table for everybody to eat. If you look at the majority of like the wealthiest people in the world or in the U S or whatever, right. They all know each other. It's very like close knit, like Mm -hmm. the millionaires and billionaires. You can look at all the celebrities, like, they all, they're all in tune. They're all hanging out to the same parties. They're all doing the same shit. They're all collabing. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because there's power in numbers. Like, one man can do only so much. What's one times one? One. What's two times two? Four. So the more numbers you add, it's exponential growth. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So that's how I look at shit. Like, there's enough money. They're printing money every day. You know, they're, they're printing money every day. If you saw Trump's like little dumb tweet, he was talking about we just spent two uh, billion or trillion dollars on military uh, warfare and all that shit. Right. And then I saw somebody respond to it like, damn, with all that money, you could have got a, you could have gotten rid of a uh, student, uh, the, the water problem in Michigan, uh, student debt. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Student loans, uh, poverty, homelessness. You could have. X'd all that out if you would have just took the money and put it somewhere else. So the money's there. It's just what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. So there's enough there's enough money for everybody to eat. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. my biggest thing is I just want to inspire everybody. Like if I can inspire you to just change a bad habit and it helps your life positively. That was major to me because you're not going to forget how I made you feel in that moment. Like I inspired you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's one of my my biggest goals. I just want to inspire, bro. Even even what you said about coffee. Like, I know this is kind of random, like, goofy, but like, no, but like, that's a good point because coffee is a like a kind of little example, but like people use these things to enhance their life or like to get to it to achieve something easier. Like with working out, that's a good example. They use all these, all these things. Some people resort to like steroids and shit like that. Yeah. Like all these substances to like cheat facilitate. Code. Yeah, cheat codes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna, it might get you where you want to go faster, but it might not be the road, like it might not be as, the longevity won't be there. Right. If, if you just train hard and like eat right mm-hmm. and, and all that. A so. lot of people like to take the shortcuts. A lot of people don't want to really work hard. Like everybody talks about they want, I want this Tesla or I want this house or I want to be financially free, but like, what are you actually doing to get there? Yeah. You have to format a plan. You can't just say you want to do it and then just work the same job 
every day until you're 65 and now you're going to retire and but what about the rest of the life you spent you, you know you know what i'm saying like yeah there's 24 hours in a day 24 hours in a day yeah. there's dudes that make million billion dollar deals daily there's enough money out here you just got to put your focus and your mind in the right way and just work hard and stay consistent that's all i tell people like yeah everybody has their time to shine me and i had a, a meeting yesterday and he was like, man, you know, I'm trying, same conversation we're having. He's like trying to balance the work, work life and his hustle. And he's like, damn, how can I like, bro, how did you, you know, he wanted my perspective on it. Cause I went through that. Like I told you guys. Right. So it's like, I'm like, bro, not everybody has to shine right now. It's not your, like, it might not be your time to shine right now. Like I think it was Denzel. He didn't get his first major role until he was like 40 something. But now he's one of the most renowned actors ever. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it wasn't his time to shine in his 20s and 30s. But he stayed consistent, kept working, and he popped off. Yeah. Just took a little bit longer. You know, some people, I was telling my boy yesterday, I was like, Lil Bow Wow was popping early. He was a little kid, like one of the most (laughs) famous little kids ever, right? Where the fuck is Lil Bow Wow at now? Right? Is he dead? (laughs) What happened to that dude? (laughs) Like, no shade, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, like, his time was early yeah. when he popped off. Everybody blossoms at, at a different rate. Mm-hmm. Like, don't yeah, rush the process. Yeah, and uh, I, what I hear a lot of people say is the money, like, money aspect of it, where they say, I don't got money for this, don't got money for this. And that's true. That's a big part of excelling in mm-hmm. areas. But if, especially if you're a creative person or something, business-wise, it's a little different. But, like, creati- creatively, you have to harness your craft, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. if you don't have the money to be, like, getting all these supplies and going to events and doing this and doing that. Just do the thing, you know? Like, if you're a writer, write stories. If you're a painter, paint pictures. Mm -hmm. If you're a music, if you're any sort of musician, practice music. You know, that doesn't cost anything except time. And if you have one hour every day, spend that hour playing the guitar or spend that hour learning how to use that computer program or, like, whatever you can do because Mm -hmm. when you do have the money, you need to have the skill. You know what I'm saying? Because if you have all the capital to go invest into something but you don't have shit to, like put out there right no one's gonna be there for you you know it'll what I'm be saying? it'll be a seamless transition if you're working on your craft the whole time and then once you get the money you could dump it right in and then you blossom instead of like oh i'm not i'm not working on shit i just want to get my money up and then i'm gonna pop off no it don't work like that you got to work and stay consistent you hit it on the head bro like and it's also a lot of people they have i feel like to some extent maybe not everyone but most people they do have a little bit of extra money that they could use to invest on their passion it's just all what you do with it right some people yeah bro i want this to pop off i want to start my own clothing brand but you at the club every night you know what i'm saying yeah you you buying bottles and buying drinks but you want to start a clothing brand you at the club every night or you going out to eat every day. Yeah, you know? that's a big one. You smashing food. You know what I'm saying? Spending all this money on food. You better humble yourself and get home and eat a PB&J, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, eat a ham sandwich. You can eat at the house. A bowl of cereal. You know what I'm Ramen noodles. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you ain't got to go out every day and spend 15 to $20 on a meal. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. think that. Times seven days a week. Right. Times that money adds weeks. up. Every dollar, I say this every time, every dollar counts. Every dollar counts. Well, yeah. It's just what you do with it, bro. Coming from the accountant. Every dollar. <laughs> <laughs> That's always in my head. Like, hey, got to be got to be precise with your spending. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, have you ever heard of DH Gate? DH Gate, yes. Uh, it's a shipping company, right? Like, yeah, like an on- online resale, I think. I'm, or I don't really know exactly what it is, but like... I don't know. They have an app, uh, or it's an app website. I don't know. I, I I found out about it when I was in like high school. My friend was like, oh, "Yo, so yeah, it basically sell like China China retail like uh, like replicas of shit." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like when I was in high school, my friend's like, "Yo, I can get you like Beats for like twenty bucks. They don't sound like Beats, but they look like Beats." I'm like, "Fuck that." Knock off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like. I, so I've, I've like looked at looked at the app because like, I mean they have a bunch of shit on it but w- some of the stuff they sell is like d- designer shit mm-hmm. and they do have like I've just been curious just been looking uh, never bought anything off there but they have like different sellers and and like you can see how many 
it's basically like a store like eBay. It works a lot like eBay. Mm-hmm. So they have different stores and you can see how many orders those stores have made. And right. so you can see which ones have made like seven sales and you can see which ones have made like thousands and right, they're right, more right. like referred. And then you, they have like customer pictures, like yeah, customer reviews with pictures. Mm, and okay. so you can typically look at pictures and see like what, what you're getting before you buy it. Got you. And I, I just want to know like, if if that is fake, like fake for sure, or because like there's like Yeezys you can get for like sixty bucks and it says Super like fake, fake yeah right yeah. like but 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 I don't know I mean I would say I would think, <laughs> no like they're fake for sure but I, but I just want to know like how is that how is that happening Why don't you buy a pair, holla at me and I'll legit take them for you, and we'll see if they're <laughs> fake or real. I don't want to waste the sixty bucks. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. They're fake. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah. They're fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I want to know like how how like how people are doing that. There's shit. a lot like uh, they have those they have huge factories in China of replica like they replicate anything, bro. I'm talking about like they replicate like you said beats. They replicate shoes. They replicate clothing like designer clothing. They do all that. Yeah, they replicate yeah. all that fake shit. And it's it's for some, a lot of people, it's hard to tell because it's, they've gotten so good at, at making the replicas that it's like seamless, you know, because most of the time they'll get, you know, sometimes I get shoes early, but I'm, I have a method from the Adidas factory and that I'm not going to indulge on, but I get them straight from the factory, right? I'm getting them before the release date. Okay. So these Chinese people are doing the same thing. Now they see what the real product looks like and it's easier for them to replicate it early. Mm. So then when the release is coming, they're, they're right on time. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't seem like it's fake, right? Because it's like, Oh, they've just got this shoe and they're throwing it for a steal. Right? No. So they've got those factories in China that like, they've, they make face of, fucking everything mm-hmm. it's insane bro like i'm talking about like shoes clothing jewelry anything yeah, everything bro. vacuums everything yeah, yeah tvs everything. Yeah. i'm like yeah. bro what the fuck like it's nuts bro um but that's why like i'll see uh people at events a lot of times they'll try and like sell shoes like shoes that they've worn like oh i got these shoes from this place right and they end up being fake and they're like heartbroken like damn, how did, how did these end up being fake? And I'm like, you got to do your research on where you're actually buying the product from. Like, that's why those big yeah. companies are not necessarily the place to go because you're thinking, oh, this is a big brand. They got, you know, they got thousands of customers, millions of followers, all that shit, right? But they get caught selling fake shit. It happens, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen with me. Because I'm, I'm checking all of my inventory, right? These big companies, they've got so many employees. Sometimes they just hire somebody. You might not know a damn thing about shoes. And they got you inspecting the shoes to tell if they're authentic or not. <laughs> like, well, they're red. <laughs> what the fuck? How, how does that make any sense? You just hire Joe Schmo. He don't know nothing about no damn shoes. And you want him to legit check a four, five, six hundred dollar pair of shoes that a customer just ordered? What? Then you're going to tell the customer that, oh, these are legit. No, that's that's not good business. So mm-hmm. I always tell people, shop with me. You won't have that issue. Everything's legit. You know, sometimes I get mine straight from the retail store. Sometimes I get them from other avenues just because of the connections that I have, you know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's crazy, bro. There's a lot of fake shit out there. Yeah, I wondered if there was ever, if you ever ran into any issues like, now that now that you say that, I just uh, there was just like a article that came out. I think it was earlier this week or or last week. There was a uh, the U.S. seized like seven hundred forty thousand dollars or a, a million dollars worth of sneakers, fake sneakers. Like people were smuggling snake of uh, fake sneakers from uh, China to to resell here. Damn, you know, yeah. think about it. They're like you said. They're ordering these fake off whites from China, right? And it looks just like the real shit. They're getting them for twenty, thirty dollars, and then they're coming over here and selling them for a thousand. They're they're sticking people. They're mm-hmm. robbing them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
that shit just happens, bro. They just busted that. I was like, man, th- that, that's why I reposted the shit like, shop with me, you don't have this problem. <laughs> There's no smuggling. Trust me, if I was, if I was, my, uh, I would be at a whole different level right now if I was smuggling and flipping sh- fake shoes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be hustling from state to state, different countries, yeah, right. parking lot to parking lot. If I had, if I was making those kind of profits on, on every flip, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be super good. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just, I just tell people, think about it logically, right? If a shoe comes out and it costs $200, right? Why in the world would somebody sell the shoe for that price or cheaper if it's sold out? How does that make sense? Supply and demand. Supply and demand. Raise the price. Right. The price would naturally go up if it's sold out because people want it. It's gone, right? Why would you sell it for cheaper than that? Makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Even if you got your employee discount on it, right? You would still sell it for more because now it's just increasing your margins, right? So I just tell people, think about it logically, bro. Why would somebody sell you something for retail or less? Can you often can you often check or like uh, know like just walking on the street if someone's wearing like Yeezys, yeah let's say yeah. you can tell like right off the bat usually if it's yeah, fake yeah I, I spot people wearing fake shit all the time you ever point it out oh bro I walk in, <laughs> I walk into like McDonald's or something oh first thing I do get my phone out yo those almost look like Yeezys <laughs> I put bro got the feezies on <laughs> you know what I'm saying like uh, I instantly put that up I'm like yo. Shop with me and this will never happen to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so great. Yeah, bro. It's, it's crazy. Because people are thinking the same thing. They're like, damn, that's a lot of money. But do you want the real thing or you want the fake thing? You want to fake it till you make it or you want to be authentic? I like the authentic route. Like, be true to who you are. You don't got to have it all. You can have that one thing that you get and that's it for the year. But at least you were real about it. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. You weren't faking it. You know? So... I just tell people, err on the side of caution with that shit, bro. If you ever got any questions, holla at me. Is it usually <laughs> super, uh, I imagine the quality, like the actual quality of the shoe, if you did like buy fake Yeezys or whatever, would the quality of the actual shoe be compromised a whole lot or yeah. would it mainly just be the name? No, the, the quality of the shoe as far as like the texture on the material, the material itself, the form of the shoe, um, the... The type of laces they use, um, the design, you know, some Yeezys have the stripe on them, some, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can tell just by looking at them most of the time, but if I got them in hand, it's like, I could tell you in like less than a minute if they're fake or not. Oh, so let me ask you this. Have you just ever... Just because I've, I've, I'm so experienced yeah. with yeah. shoes, you know, I've been around shoes. I've always had a passion for shoes. I've always loved shoes. I've been around authentic shit my whole life you know working at finish line and in the sneaker game that i've been in so long i can spot fakes like that you know so have you ever had an order or like have you had inventory that you were checking that you noticed is fake and you have to like contact the the distributor oh, you got people, it from and I've, I've gotten i've had people try to finesse me before but that got handled accordingly like you're not about to just get over on me bro like some people they'll Let's say I'm, I'm going to buy a shoe and they'll send you pictures, right? Oh, I see. Right? They send me pictures of the real shit, but oh. then they ship me the, sh- the fake shit. Oh, and you call it out real quick. Oh, of course. Hey, bro, this is fake. What you want to, like, you want me to put you on blast or how, how you, <laughs> how you want to handle this? Because I can do that quick, swiftly. You know, I know a lot of people, like, how you want this to escalate? You know what I'm saying? You going to give me my bread back? Or I, I could blow this shit up and shut down your whole little operation. So I've had I've had some people do bad business, you know, but I handle that. It gets handled accordingly. Those are the people that don't last. You know what I'm saying? Those are the people that are trying to make the quick flips that they don't have any longevity in this. You yeah. know, they come and go. I've been doing this. And those are the people that are just trying to make a buck. You know, what Just I'm trying to make a buck. Just trying to get over on people. They don't care about all the stuff I told you guys I care about, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. given that they, they don't care. Just, just want to get that, get that off, make that money and be gone, you know? So it happens, unfortunately. Like I feel bad for people. Like there'll be little kids at the events that I go to and they'll be walking around like, anybody want to buy these? Like trying to sell their shoes that they wore a couple times or that they just want to make some money or whatever. 
and they don't even know their shoe's fake. They'll come up to me and they'll be like, would you want to buy this? And I'll be like, sometimes I got to let them know what's real. Like, hey, bro, your shoe's fake, bro. Damn. Like, I'm sorry. Next time, you know, shop on me and this shit will happen. <laughs> Damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, <laughs> Give them the card. It, yeah. Like, no. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to see that disappointment on yeah. their face. Like, some people are heartbroken, you know, because that might have been their one Christmas present for the whole year and they got finessed. I'll be heartbroken too. Shit, I'm a little kid and I just wanted these pair of shoes and somebody got over on me like that and I was wearing them and they were fake the whole time and I didn't even know it. Yeah, right. That's the worst part. You over here flexing around town like, ooh, bitch, I got that new shit. It's fake. Damn. You don't even know it. So have you ever had any really kind of serious setbacks as far as inventory with like, I don't know, something like if you had stuff packed to go to an event on like a plane or something and like luggage gets lost or or theft or damage, like maybe, I don't know, like water damage from where you stored it or something like Have you ever had any setbacks like that? I've had, I've had, I'll tell you, I'll give you two examples of some bad shit that I've had happen. Um, I started, I was doing business when I was working corporate accounting. I was uh, I started doing business with this dude in Ohio and uh, I had the opportunity to be a part of a store in New York right on uh, right in Times Square right across from Macy's and but I was working corporate full time but I was still plugged in on the shoes like I had all these shoes I just couldn't do day to day sales all the time right because I was caught up in the office so I had uh, gave this dude a bunch of my shoes go to New York set up the store and just make sales he didn't have a job he had nothing nothing else to do you know let's power up i give you the opportunity to be in this store and let, let's do it bro this dude went up to the store in new york was selling my shit didn't tell me about it kept the bread from it and i never got that money back damn yeah lesson learned lesson learned i'm still trying to find that nigga though <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, now sweating uh yeah and then i had another another situation last year when i was in new york uh i went out to new york for this uh it was a bape concert and they were doing like limited releases and shit right man tell me why these fools man look don't fly on frontier these fucking fools lost my luggage the entire trip i had no clothes the whole trip the whole trip. I'm talking about this is like a. So I was flying to Cleveland and then driving from Cleveland to New York because one of my boys over there, we were going together for the event. Bro, I went like six days without any clothes. Damn. You know what I did? I went to. I, I, as soon as I got off the plane and I knew they lost my shit, I was like, I raised hell in that bitch. I'm like, look. I'm not about to be running the streets in the same draws for like five, six days. Y'all got me twisted. Like, this is not how it's going down. I went up. I went to Walmart and I ran it up and I made their ass reimburse me for everything that I, I had to buy. A toothbrush, deodorant, toothpaste. Yeah. Oh, you guys are going to pay me for this. You're not about to have me running around with no clothes. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm running around in the same shit for six days. Yeah. No. I, I ran it up at Walmart real quick on the late night because I got in late at like midnight, one o'clock. I was blown. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to Walmart. Hey, bro, take me to Walmart. I'm going to go run it up on, and they pay me back. I got, they finally, what was crazy was I didn't finally get my luggage back until I got back here. And it was like nine days later, 10 days later from the initial day I took Jeez. the trip. I'm like, bro, y'all can't be serious. Then Where'd your luggage go? I'm like, well, how the f <laughs> they ship they sent it to like Colorado or some fucking. I'm like, what? I had the most simplest direct flight. It's not even like I had a connecting flight. It was direct flight. Like you literally put my shit on the whole wrong plane and then <laughs> and then couldn't find it. Now mind you, I had some like good shoes in there. Like I don't just you know like I was like, bro, if y'all lost my shoes, you're cutting me a nice check. <laughs> Cause I'm about to I'm about to fabricate a little bit because for you know i'm like bitch, oh, yeah. what? lost my shoes i can't get those back you got i gotta pay resale on them now so y'all gotta <laughs> y'all gotta pay me for that you know what i'm saying so okay. yeah i had some crazy bullshit happen for sure just it just comes with it sometimes you know like i said that adversity comes your way you just gotta adjust and adapt so. yeah Damn. definitely oh, 
so you already mentioned the merch this year you're starting new, uh, merch we talked about the track suits a little bit and yeah. stu- and stuff like that um and then that top secret project that you won't release any information about till later this year mm-hmm. is there anything else coming up that you do want to shout out like any like events that you're going to be doing uh in the upcoming months or anything like that that's a good question um i do have a, a couple sneaker events that i'm doing coming up i'll, I'll be going to uh all-star weekend in chicago coming up that's just like a big time for my business as far as like limited releases coming out and just all the all-star festivities and stuff like that um i do have a collab thing that i'm working on with royal hustle like i mentioned to you guys um i do have a meeting with an artist i'm gonna let you know who it is tomorrow i'm meeting with one way tb tomorrow um, just gonna talk some business, you know, get some things figured out on that end. Um, but yeah, everything else, I'm just strategically planning on, and I wanna, you know, drop some information on that. But we can always reconvene and, and you know, I can expand on it a little bit. Just I wanna make sure everything is solidified, and I don't wanna speak on anything until it's it's concrete, you know. So, um, you know, I don't wanna put the word out there on something and not come, follow through on it. You know what I mean? I, I like to stand. I stand by what I say. I stand on it, like my boy TV say. I stand on it. You know what I'm saying? So, so what are the websites or social media pages you want the people to look out for? Uh, you can look at that camera and let them know. Yeah, you can check me out at the Atomic Kicks on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm on TikTok too. Y'all better get at me on TikTok. TikTok lit. Um, I'm working on revamping the website, um, but you know, catch me here in the city. I got some big things planned. I'm ready to blow it up for y'all. So let's get it. Two through nine. Hell yeah. Yeah, you're welcome back anytime, bro. Thank you for coming yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I gotta Appreciate say. This y'all has been great. Been Inspiring as fuck, bro. Yeah, Appreciate right. Appreciate it, bro. I'm glad. I'm glad. This is a great conversation. Like, I, I fought with y'all boys. We had a great dialogue. And uh, I'll be looking forward to getting up with y'all and talking anytime. Yes, sir. And where can they find us at, dude? They can find us at the City of Palms Podcast. We're on Instagram, Facebook. We're on all podcast listening services wherever you listen we're on we're on there new episodes every monday youtube if you want to watch us yeah, that's it man yeet and with that outro showing woo